Hi everybody, welcome back to 10 Minute I.O. where you'll find bite-sized information on all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Stephen Zhang and I'm an I.O. psychologist. We'll be talking about today Chromebox Alpha. One of you emailed um, about putting out an SPSS tutorial on Chromebox Alpha in terms of alpha or reliability as a whole. There's another video um, just on reliability or different types of reliability. But today we'll be focusing on how we can conduct Chromebox Alpha using SPSS. Before we get started, let's take a quick quiz. Chromebox Alpha or Coefficient Alpha is a statistic used to quantify which measure of reliability? A. Test retest. B. Internal consistency. C. Interrater. Or D. Equivalent forms. See if you can guess which one. I'll come back towards the uh, end of the video to give you the answer. Quickly, coefficient alpha was developed by a guy named Lee Kronbach. He was an educational psychologist at UCLA. He was born in Fresno uh, and later moved to Palo Alto in the 90s. Uh, and this is important. You'll see his picture here on the right. Chromebox alpha or coefficient alpha is extremely important and useful because, and uh, one of the reasons is it's one of the most frequently used measures of reliability for tests, assessments. Uh, when I say tests, by the way, tests are basically a set of items that have a correct answer. Assessments are mostly I'm referring to personalities, values, uh, interest assessments. Coefficient alpha tells you how similar each item is in measuring the same concept or construct. So if you think about shyness uh, as a concept, we don't usually ask a single question to measure shyness. We usually ask a set of questions, anywhere from, let's say, four to ten items, that measure uh, shyness from different angles. And so that's what I mean by <clears throat> each item. So we want to make sure that all of those items that are designed to capture that concept of shyness are, in fact, moving in the right direction or capturing the same idea. Coefficient alpha ranges from 0 to 1. You will, you'll never see a reliability of 1 unless you're asking the same set of questions over and over. Uh, typically what you'll see is reliabilities uh, from 0.7 to about 0.9. I show a general rule of thumb for gauging reliability. Less than 0.4 is generally considered poor. Uh, between 0.4 and 0.7 is considered, uh, considered moderate. Anything above 0.7 is generally considered good. Now, depending on who you talk to, you know, those numbers could vary slightly. But also keep in mind that just because the reliability is at 0 0.68, 0 0.67, doesn't mean that it's a bad test. It just means that you might have to tweak a couple of things with the items in order to uh, make it generally acceptable. Before we get on to the SPSS, I'm going to be using this as an example. So this concept of transparency. If you think about someone who's transparent, it's, it is someone who is completely comfortable being themselves in, uh, around you, around others. So here we formally define it as one's willingness and ability to communicate one's thoughts and feelings free from deceit, uh, being easy to detect, someone who is completely comfortable being themselves. So you can see how that cap concept is captured using these six items. The first three items are getting at the thoughts, feelings, and motives. Uh, my thoughts are easily perceived by others. Second one is feelings. Third one is motives. Uh, item number four says, I often behave with clear intentions. There's no deception. Number five, pe people in my life know how I feel about them. Number six is getting at, uh, I see myself as a good person. Now, this is measured using the five-point liquor type scale that you see on the bottom. Strongly disagree to strongly agree. You've seen these scales. Now, I'll highlight uh, item number six because I'm going to come back to that when we go through the analysis. Think about that. I see myself as a good person. You have to ask yourself, does that item really capture this idea of transparency? And we'll see how that does. Uh, we'll see what the data tells us about that particular item. Let's go on to the database here, data file. Uh, I just opened up in SPSS. Uh, I won't go through how you import this. I assume that you import, you know how to import this uh, from an Excel or CSV file into an SPSS 
uh, database. But the first column here showed the case or the subjects or individuals who have taken the assessment. So you can consider number one here, Joe, number two, Sam, three, Susan, and so on. And we see that we have a total of 120 subjects or cases, 120 people who took the assessment. Column one shows transparent uh, item number one, item number two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six items that measure, again, all collectively designed to measure this uh, concept called transparency. We want, to know how, we want to know how consistent these items are in capturing that concept. So we go up to Analyze, go down to Scale, Reliability Analysis, we skip Case, and we move all six items over. Alpha is selected as the default. I'll go through these other types of reliability analysis in future videos. Click on the statistics. Ignore everything else here. And just click on item scale and items, or item scale if item deleted. And then click on continue. What that will give us is a summary. Shows a total of 120 subjects took the assessment. Chromebox Alpha of 0.586, which is below the ideal point of 0.7 across the six items. Item statistics tells you what the means are, standard deviation, and the number of, or the sample size for each of the items. The column that we're interested in is in under this item total statistics table, specifically the last column. Chromebox Alpha if item deleted. This is very useful because <clears throat> it tells you what the Chromebox Alpha or coefficient Alpha would have been if we had excluded one of these items. So across the six items, what we're looking for is the highest number. So here in this case, we can see that item number six shows a 0.726. What that means is that if we were to throw out item number six, coefficient alpha would be 0.726 instead of 0.586, which is currently the case. Just to, just to show you, uh, demonstrate what I'm talking about, go back to the uh, analyze, scale, reliability analysis, and go ahead and remove that item. Now we're just looking at coefficient alpha or calculating coefficient alpha across the five items. Click statistics, the same uh, three boxes, continue, and then click on OK. Just as the previous table showed, we now have Chromebox Alpha of 0.726. I hope uh, that helps. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. And that's why, if you think about that last item, I see myself as a good person, the reason why that came out as suspicious or not as consistent as other items is if you think about it, I see myself as a good person really isn't getting at this idea of transparency, right? And that's where uh, this coefficient, calculating coefficient alpha and looking at that last column can be very helpful. Going back to the quiz, if you guessed internal consistency, internal consistency refers to the degree to which the items in a given test, again, collectively, a set of items in a given test are collectively measuring the same concept or idea, uh, also called a, a construct. Uh, with that, that ends the tutorial for Chromebox Alpha using SPSS. If you like the video, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Uh, more to come soon. Thank you for watching.